grandson the right thought. Abba said he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. So those who are chosen in this world were chosen for the new earth, the new heaven. Correct? Chosen to do what? To carry the truth forward. See, this world you live in is designed to stamp the truth out, to destroy the truth, to steal the truth, to kill the truth. Not you or them or her or him or she or he. The truth is what has been under attack. It ain't personal, like I told y'all. It's the truth. And like I told y'all before, all of y'all who love this world, who are in this world, who love it, who enjoy it, you're proving that you love lies. <clears throat> you're proving that you love deceit. Anything that's against truth, put it that way. Deceit. Trickery. Secrecy. See? Truth is light. There's no secrets in light. There's nothing hidden in the light. There's nothing that's tricking in the light. There's nothing that can deceive in the light. So it's obvious why this world hates the truth, isn't it? They can't exist if the truth is existing, which is the new world, the new earth of truth. So you who are chosen are, are in an um, impasse, crossroads, right? Can't you see it? A, a, a strange time you're in where the two are intersecting. The two worlds, the new and the old, are actually intersecting. The old is going out and the new one's coming in. You're living at that particular time. To put it in Abba's words, the foot of Esau and the hand of Jacob... That's the that's the moment you're at. See, the man child being born, the new world. That's the new body, the new man child. The old man child was corrupt. See, the the first child was corrupted, perverse, profane. Y'all see it? And now we're at the end of that world. And though they try to build it back up, which is deceiving a lot of y'all, they try to build it back up, he gonna throw it back down. And if you knew his word, then you'd know that already. And that's what perplexes me about all of y'all who don't stay in his word. See, because this is a simple truth, and I know that y'all hate this, so y'all try to cut corners. And we're gonna prove all of this. Let's use, for instance, Floyd Mayweather, boxer undefeated doing a craft boxing now his opponents in his division weight division they seek to topple him from his throne in other words you see so whoever makes the greatest sacrifice will win so Floyd Mayweather is, is actually making the greater sacrifice than all of his opponents. That's the secret to his success. That is the secret to anyone's success. Do you hear me? So if you wonder how some people get successful, some people don't, it's the sacrifice. So now, in order to get rich in this world, what does it cost? Because it does cost. What does it say about sin? The wages of sin. Have you counted the cost of sin? <clears throat> well, it's death. <laughs> so let's just use something not so dramatic. Let's say in order to get rich in this world, it requires a lot of your time. So if two people are chasing money and one of them gives 100% of his waking time to chasing money, the other man gives 20% of his waking time to chasing money, 
who do you think is going to be able to accumulate more? See how obvious it is? Same thing with the gym. If someone sticks to their dietary plan and workout plan to the 100%, the other man only sticks to his shit. They got the same plan and everything, but he only sticks to it 10% of the time. Who do you think is going to look the best? Okay. Now y'all all understand that. See, everybody in class understand that. Now watch this. The same thing goes with God's word. <laughs> so whoever has dedicated the most of their time to see, searching after the truth through God's word will have the greatest output. See? Just like anything else in life the greatest sacrifice so just like the time with the money so this man took a hundred percent of his waking time searching after Abiyah's word so all he thought about so all he meditated on all day every day this other man he spends 50 percent of his time doing that well who's going to get the greater gain isn't it obvious watch there was a woman who suffered some wrongdoing to her some iniquity so she needed righteous judgment but in the place where she lived there was an unrighteous judge he was unrighteous but that was the that was the judge so the woman petitioned to this judge every day for justice in her case for for him to hear her case she went every day every day every day every day and he put her off for a long time see But after a while, he got tired of her coming and he said, what did this woman want, man? Give her what she asked for. See? So he gave her a judgment because of her persistence. Do y'all hear it? So then it all is the same. Truth is truth. That's why it's so beautiful. And that's why I don't understand why more of y'all won't come on this ark. <laughs> I don't. That fear of you being exposed of your own truth has you so locked that you can't move. You can't get on the ark. Well, let me tell you something that may help alleviate that fear. Everybody fucked up. <laughs> okay? Everybody is fucked up. So free yourself of feeling like you the spotlight gonna only be on you about dumb shit you done. No, 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 no. All of us. Got some embarrassing ass, silly, dumb ass shit we didn't did. That's, that's just shameful as hell. Every one of us has it. We all got a shame coat. Okay? So then, go ahead and take yours on off. You'll be surprised how freeing it is when you talk about it. You understand what I'm saying? Once you just expose the shit. Yep, you heard I did that. Yeah, well, back then I did. Sure did. I was in the world. I was trying to be the best worldly nigga. Shit, when I was in that mindset. Because I, I seek to be the best at anything that I do. So, when I was playing basketball, I wanted to be the best. When I played football, I wanted to be the best. When I played music, I wanted to be the best. When I wrote songs, I wanted to be the best. When I did this, I wanted to be the best. It don't matter what it is. So if I was in ignorance and I'm doing something, it's wicked as hell. I don't know. I'm in ignorance. I'm still trying to be the best at the shit. Until you learn through Solomon's wisdom. Thank you, Abba Yah, for that. That all is vanity and it frees you. The truth does. You say, oh, shit. <laughs> so I'm going to the gym six times a week so I can look good as hell. And yes, it has a reward for a time. When people marvel at you and women swoon over you and. You know, people giving you all this extra attention. That's all you get, though, man. I've been there, done that, so I know. <laughs> so I know. Nothing really changes, honestly. Nothing really changes. You get the same amount of reason. I mean, the same amount of uh, women, just for the different reason. Than you was getting when you had the dad body <laughs> and the beer belly. You was getting the same amount of women, just for a different reason. So it, it is the same. It's all vanity, man. You see, so you put that effort and all that discipline and hard work that it takes you getting that body, you apply that to the word and then look at the payout it give you. See, I ain't lying about nothing. I got videos right now on my page where I'm working out, lifting weights, 500, 600 pounds and all this other shit. So that means I was very disciplined and very dedicated. You don't lift that much weight without being dedicated and disciplined. 
See, because you don't just wake up lifting that. That takes years of hard work to be able to get to that point. So you, you're you seeing the results of hard years of work, in other words. Not just that day you saw me lifting the 500 pounds. You missed all the days where I injured my back at 405 and had to rehab my back and then get strong enough to get back to 405. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Before I could go to 500. You didn't even see that. You don't even know that. But it happened. You see? So it's the same thing when we're in the world. People don't see us when we have our trips and our falls and our lessons that we have in the spirit, when the spirit world, when we're going through our life and we're um, letting Abba's word guide us in it. Instead of our own understanding and what we think is going on, we let Abba's understanding guide us. The scriptures tell us that. Lean not into your own understanding. So when something happened, y'all start reacting on what you think is best. That shit ain't going to do you no good. It's only going to hurt you. It's only going to hurt you. You got to trust. You got to trust Abba fully because he's the only one you can trust. He said, let Abba's word be true and every man a liar. So that means every nigga that's not telling you God's word is lying to you. Simple. Why y'all make it hard? Why y'all play with fire? Y'all like getting burnt or something? The hell with that. Stay in the, stay in the safe spot. Stay in the ark. Abba's word. Because it's going to explain it to you. When you're crying because your mom is hurting your feelings because it seems as though no matter what you say, no matter how kind you try to be, no matter how understanding you try to be, she just can't see your feelings. She just can't understand your perspective and your side. She can't do it, no matter how hard you try to get her to do it. And then she has all these flying monkeys in the family that confirm her side against yours, even though hers is completely crazy and nonsense and lies. That's the world you live in. Well, Yahusha will tell you the truth of it. He'll say, I came to cause that division. I made your mother show out like that so you could see that that's not really your mother. I said, when my own mother came to me, I said, who is my mother? And then I said, those who keep the commandments are my mother. So then when you see your mother hating you and it's confusing to you because you're like, that's my mother. Stop lying to yourself. Live in the truth. It's not your mother. Your mother is the one who keeps the same commandments that you do. Just like if you're wicked and a, and a truth person comes to you. You have a mother of truth and the child is wicked. Well, child, you're never going to understand why your mother says the things that she says and does, does the things that she does. You're going to think your mother is wicked and hateful. For living in truth. You are. So that's the world you're living in. Well, for that mother, Abiyah has already told you in his word. I came to cause division between the mother and the daughter. The father and the son. For you fathers and you sons that are having enmity in these days. Abiyah's word told you that. And he told you why. Because Christ is here. Well, what is Christ? Truth. Just like I've always told you. The truth is going to divide because you have family members where some are living in truth and some are living in lies. And truth be told, very few are actually living in truth. So what did he say in his word? I will take them two of a family and one of a city. I don't know if y'all hearing that. Like, it's as if like when y'all hear these words, it's like not even even able to penetrate your, your heart at times. Because if... Y'all, the real ones understand what I'm saying. I'm talking about the rest. It's like, did y'all hear that? I will take them in the end times when, when he destroys this world, he will take his out first like he always does, protects his own and protect them. When he takes them, he will take them two of a city, one of a family, I mean, two of a family, one of a city, he said. So think about your city and think about one nigga being in it. That's you. It's destroyed completely and you're the only nigga left in your city. Like I am a legend. Okay. Talking about, I wish I could see another person just so I could have a conversation like I am legend was. The Bible says that, guys. It says they will search and look and yearn to want to see another man. One man will look for another man in his own city and won't find him. That's written in scriptures. And you guys are wondering why they make a movie about it called I Am Legend.
Y'all got to wake up and just understand it. The truth that you're living in. Because that's the ark. Truth. His word. Light. All of that is the same thing. <laughs> because it's what illuminates your walk, your path. It is a light unto your path. Just like his word says it is. <laughs> I mean, I have to laugh because sometimes I utter words out of my mouth and then I think about the scripture right after I say it. I go, wow, Albert, you, you, you've said everything, man. <laughs> I'm just here saying, look what Albert said, y'all. Look what Albert told you. Look what he said. Look what he's promised you. If you accept his son, truth. If you accept truth, man. But I told you, you got the shame coat on. Now I'm hiding because I don't want anybody to know my truth. But Abba knows. So who cares whether that nigga in front of you know it? Fuck him. Your father knows it. You can't hide it from him. So stop trying to hide it from these lowly creatures. His creation. Why are you, why are you doing that? That's so weird when you think about it. You're scared that they're going to cast you out when he said, blessed are you when they do that. See, you're scared of that. But he said you're blessed. So then stand strong, get cast out and then rejoice for the truth, because you were only cast out because of the truth. Right. And then what did he say? Those who suffer for my name's sake, the truth. If a man suffer for lies, what profit is it? Watch this. There's, a, there's two nations at war. One of them captures a nigga from the other nation. They held him prisoner of war. Now they're trying to get information out of this nigga. Now they beat him and 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 beat him damn near to death. Torture this nigga damn near to death. Then at the end he finally says, okay, okay, I'll talk. I'll talk. Now everything he said was a lie. When, he's, when he talks, he says, I'll finally tell you. He says everything, it's a lie. He says, yes, the general's going to be at this location at this time. So they go find out the shit was a bullshit ass lie. He just made up some shit. What do you think is going to happen when they come back? So what profit was it of him getting his ass beat all over that shit? For nothing. That's what the soldiers going to say. They come back. They're going to say, we beat this nigga ass all over a lie. We did all this shit for nothing. See? But if a man suffer for the truth's sake... He say, I ain't saying shit. I'm keeping my mouth closed. Just like Yahushua did. See? And they beat him and kill him. Beat him to death. Well, then he have suffered righteously. But y'all don't know nothing about that lifestyle, I guess, huh? Y'all so scared of stuff? Y'all so scared of the boogeyman? Shit, y'all scared of scream mask? Michael Myers gonna come down with the William Shatner mask on and get you and shit? What else y'all scared of? Y'all scared of the ring? <laughs> the little girl gonna come out the TV and come get your ass? What else y'all scared of in this world? <laughs> the uh, that nigga uh, let's play a game. That guy uh, Jigsaw, that little dude, that little puppet and shit. Y'all scared of that nigga too? What else y'all scared of? <laughs> y'all so scary in this world, man. Y'all swear something is gonna get you and cause you to die. Y'all so scared of it. But if your man give up his life for the truth's sake, he shall find it. Here we go again. A seed don't grow unless it die. Y'all don't hear none of that stuff because y'all scared of it. You got to give your life up, man. And honestly, this is all you're doing. You're falling before Abiyan saying, I confess my sins. I know I've done so much wrong that I deserve death. I deserve to die for what I've done. I know this according to your word. But also according to your word, Abba Yah, you are full of tender mercy and you forgive those who confess their sins before you are quick to forgive because I've read your word and that's how I know it. See, his words do it. Save you. It saves. <laughs> you got to confess the truth. I've done this and this is what I deserve. So give me grace, Father. 
Give me a chance to make it right. And I'll repent and amend my ways. And then I really do do it. See, that's the point. You really amend your ways to what you know is true within yourself. Stop trying to look for something outside to, to do sin. That's all you niggas is doing. Come on now, let's keep it real today. Can y'all keep it real with the grandson today and let's just sit down and just talk for real? For real about what's really going on out here? Because that's all we've been doing. We look for things outside of our own voice in our head that's telling us it's wrong. But point bank, period. It says, it's wrong, don't do it. We look outside ourselves and say, Hey, what do you think, friend? Hey, what do you think, internet? Hey, what do you think, Google? Hey, what do you think, YouTube? And then we can make our decisions off of all that shit we've read or heard or seen. That's all we're doing instead of just listening to ourselves. That shit wrong, nigga, don't do it. Okay, I ain't doing it. All right, simple as that. Now that moment of what you thought you would have got has passed. See, you thought you would have missed out on something. Matter of fact, let me tell you a little story. There's a woman I met the other day. Her name Tina. Tina's walking down the street. Now, Tina looked like she in bad shape, y'all. She thin. She little. She she obviously has been on some type of, of, of drugs. <laughs> She's an alcoholic. She's just looking bad. She looks in bad shape, okay? All right. She looked like one of the walking dead, y'all. Just being real. She's walking up the street. Now, I told y'all I've been living in my car and shit, right? So I'm just chilling. I see the same people pretty much every day. I'm in the same pre predominant area, right? So she comes walking past my car. And she's like, ooh, you handsome. <laughs> I said, thank you. She says, you real handsome. I said, thank you. She says, can you buy me a shot? I said, oh, I'm sorry, Tina. I ain't got no money. Well, this is before I knew her name was Tina. But I said, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't have any money. She says, oh, okay. She said, let me tell you something. When I was young, I had a man that loved me, and he bought me anything I wanted, and he took good care of me, but I thought I was missing out on something, and so I treated him bad and, and ran off on him, and I regret that to this very day. Thought I was missing something, and then she turned around and walked on up the street. <sighs> Do you hear that, Israel? <laughs> Do you hear that? And she was an Israelite in the flesh, you know, elder Hebrew woman. Do you hear what she's saying to y'all, young ladies? Do you hear what your elder woman is saying to y'all? I thought when I was young and pretty and fine that I had the world by the balls. And I left my husband who loved me and took care of me. Thinking I was missing out on something in this world. And now here I am on the street Looking crazy as hell with a wig on my head. Looking terrible. Talking about, can you buy me a shot? That's Israel. Israel is the old Hebrew woman with the wig on her head. Bald. Stanking. Looking toe up. On drugs. An alcoholic. Asking somebody to give her a handout. Because she left her husband. Isn't that obvious? Israel is Tina. <laughs> Facts be told. And that's actually written in the Bible for all y'all who think I just saying that. That's written in there. Let us return unto my husband, she said. Let me return to my husband for it were better with me then than it is now. That's what's written in there. Israel said, let me go back to my husband who was loved me and took care of me and gave me everything I needed. See. See. And Abba says, I gave you everything you needed and you went a whoring after your lovers. And then she went chasing after her lovers and couldn't find them, just like Tina did. I thought I was missing something. Now we're all your lovers that you were giving yourself to. They can't even buy you a shot. They're nowhere to be found. You, you ask, you're begging in the street for a shot so you can feel better. Drawn away all your sorrows. That's Israel. <laughs> you see? But those elect, that portion of Jacob that is not like them, us, the elect, the few. See, I know I was word and I know it's true. And I believe every jot and every tittle of it. See, when he says there are a few, I believe that. He didn't say it one time. He said, many are called, but few are chosen. What else did he say, Israel? He said, the road unto life is narrow, and few shall find it. 
So here we go again. So I'm only talking to a few people in the world, ain't I? Gotta be. <laughs> I mean, let's keep it real. I'm only talking to a few of y'all, right? I gotta be, according to his word, because there's only a few. Many were called out of the world. Many were called, but few were chosen out of that group of people that were called. Only a few of us. Just like if you had to choose a bodybuilder. There are many bodybuilders standing up there. See? But the best is the one you choose. That's what Abba did. He called up a bunch of bodybuilders. He said, yeah, a lot of people have read my word. Now, let me see the few who are just specimens. Y'all get it? Let me look and see the few who are just, just amazing in it. In other words, have the best body. I mean, they have nothing lacking, nothing slacking in their body. I want those guys. That's what he did. Just like when you choose the military, but you got some Navy SEALs, don't you? <laughs> now, how many SEALs are in a squad or a team? How many? Not a whole lot, see? It's a few elite. The best of the best, the cream of the crop. Creme de la creme. The elect. The best. So that's who I'm talking to. And like I said, anybody else who get the crumbs that fall, then eat them things and nourish up and hope that I will build you up into a man. Upright. Ask for it. Yearn for his truth and righteousness. Ask for it. Y'all ain't got to be scared to ask. I'll be out for the truth. I know sometimes the truth be scary. But ask him. Be like, I'll be out. I ain't laying with nobody until you tell me that that is my spot, kingdom spouse in truth. And how do you know? Because that person will be united to you without you doing a damn thing. They just will be around you. They just will be with you by their own choice. That's how you know it's true love. See, the woman has to choose to be with that man. Y'all didn't know that, did you? The man can petition her. See, that's what y'all do in this world. You say, get on the one knee, will you marry me? So that's actually what you're doing. So then nothing what I'm saying is any tricks in it, do you see? The woman is choosing to say yes or not. She can say no. She can say yes. So then the man don't need to be trying to do anything but be who he is, a tower. And then the woman will come to him and willingly want to be his wife. I want to be his wife. I want to be his woman. I reverence him. His words, his thoughts, his integrity, his honesty, his uprightness, his righteousness. I reverence those qualities. That's the woman you need to be with, brother. <laughs> Oh, we could talk about this all day, y'all. I'm going to keep this message short. All right? Silhouette, Mr. Allah.